Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today we're going to process the Heart Nebula, and we're going to do it in a combination of SHO and HOO. And I know that sounds a little unusual, but it'll make more sense when we go through it. And if you're interested in learning a lot more about how I do my processing, uh, registration is now open for our 2025 Southwest Utah uh, Premium Astrophotography Masterclass. Uh, and that's taught by myself and Dr. Christian Sasse of iTelescope. And it'll be a week-long uh, in-depth masterclass on astrophotography and especially uh, post-processing with PixInsight and Photoshop. Uh, we'll also be going out in the evenings to do Milky Way photography from some of the uh, beautiful uh, desert areas around St. George, Utah. So if you're interested, you can check that out on our website. And now let's jump into PixInsight for part one of processing the Heart Nebula in SHO and HOO. <music> I think I'm going to approach this in two parts um, because the videos tend to get pretty long otherwise. The first part will focus on what I do in PixInsight uh, with the data and then the second part will focus on Photoshop. So let's get started with PixInsight. Uh, I have already run uh, the weighted batch preprocessor but let's just take a quick look at the settings. Uh, I've loaded of course the the lights and the calibration frames um, from the data over the last few nights. So I have a bias master, a darks master, set of masters actually, uh, flats. And what I do is just keep a folder of all of my flats and all of my darks and my bias for a given scope configuration. And then I can just load to that whole directory and it loads the uh, all of the masters all at once. PixInsight just ignores the ones that aren't needed so it doesn't really hurt anything or slow anything down to have them here. Uh, the lights are all loaded, and this is, I say, over a period of, I believe I'm up to five nights now, but those have been partial nights, and we've also had moonlight, uh, which has been interfering. Uh, a couple things that uh, you probably want to do, uh, most important I found is under image registration. Uh, I have this pixel interpolation set to by cubic B spline. Um, I found when it was set on auto, Occasionally, you know, maybe one out of 30 or 40 times, uh, you would get some weird results. It looked like you're looking through a screen door. And setting that to bicubic B-spline solves that problem. So that's probably the most important setting change here. I normally keep local normalization turned off also. And then on the calibration tab, uh, you'll see that I only have three sets of lights. I have the hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we're going to do the SHO over an HOO image rather than an RGB image. If I had RGB, I would normally place it over an RGB image. Uh, because of the moonlight, I didn't think it was worth shooting RGB, so I'm just using HOO for the stars and for my background layer. And it's being saved in this uh, Heart Dream folder. So this is already run, and that means we should now, if we look at the output area. My heart dream here is my three sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen that were just created today. So let's open those. And I know I'm going to want an HOO image, so before I even go any further, I'm going to create an HOO image from these three. To do that from my saved process icons on the right, I'm just going to open channel combination and I can grab the oxygen from the little title tab over on the left, drag it over to the green and also to the blue. That's what makes it HOO and hydrogen to the red. Now click the solid circle and that will create our HOO image. And so now I'm just going to tile these four windows and throw a quick auto stretch on each one. So there's the HOO image. Here's our hydrogen, oxygen, 
and sulfur. And first thing I want to do is worry about the uh, gradients in here. And again, this was under a full moon, so I fully expect to have gradients. So I'm going to create an image container, and I can do that by just right-clicking anywhere in the background and choose image container. And that brings up this dialog box. And from the open views or add views icon, I can select the views. And I want to select all. That's the four that I have open. Click OK. And now I can run my saved Graxpert process icon by simply dragging the triangle from the image container window to the Graxpert process icon. And PixInsight will go through and dutifully run Graxpert on each one of these four images. So we'll just pause while it's doing that. Okay, Graxpert has finished. I want to do some uh, color calibration to the HOO image. And before I do that, I want to run Blur Exterminator in correct only mode. And again, I have a saved process icon. I can just drag that onto the image and that will run. And I'll just leave this image container open because we're going to use it um, several more times because we're going to continue processing this entire set. Blur Exterminator is done, so the next step now will be to run spectrophotometric color calibration. I have a saved process icon for my various systems. Uh, this is the Dream Scope. So normally I would just drag this over onto an RGB image, but I'm going to treat this like a narrow band image. So I'm going to double click to open that saved process icon, choose the narrow band filters mode, and then drag that onto the image to do the color calibration as an HOO image. Color calibration is done, so I can close this. And let's just update the uh, screen transfer function to get a fresh look at it. That looks good to, to my eye, uh, at least for what we're going to use it for. Uh, my next step now is to run Blur Exterminator on all four images. And I'm going to do that by just dragging the triangle again from the image container over to my Blur Exterminator saved process icon. And that will run Blur Exterminator now in, in full correction mode on all four images. Blur Exterminator has done its thing on all four of these. So now I'm ready to do the stretch. And I'm just going to temporarily move this image container over to my other monitor. And for this, I want to open the screen transfer function window. And I want to make sure that I have the a linked stretch chosen, uh, especially for the HOO image. Since that's been color calibrated, I don't want to do an unlinked stretch, which would essentially do a uh, like an auto white balance. And I want to open the histogram transformation tool because we'll be using that to actually stretch the image. And we'll start with the color image and update the STF window. And you're, you can use this just as it is. It's, it's perfectly fine. I like to usually tweak it a little bit. <clears throat> and to do that, I'm going to zoom in on these sliders, which I can do with the plus and minus buttons here. And what I'm doing is actually just zooming in on the scale, not zooming in on the image. And then go back to the arrow tool. And if you watch the image over here, you'll see as I move this slider, this is the black point slider. That will darken the blacks, the dark point, black point just a little bit. If I move the midpoint into the left, that will brighten it a little bit. And I'm not going to change it very much. And now to apply this, of course, I drag the triangle from the STF tool, copy those settings down to the histogram transformation tool, then apply it from here. And I normally, it turns the image white because it's now being stretched twice. Um, and we can just simply turn that off. I usually just leave it white until I'm done so that I know I've already done that image. So I'll just move on to the next one, update the uh, screen transfer function. I'm going to zoom with the mouse wheel which is just a little bit faster, but it is a little fiddly. And we'll just fine tune the stretch a little bit. I don't want anything to be pure black and I don't want anything to be pure white. And the stretch here is important, but it's not critical because we're going to finalize all of that in Photoshop. So we want to get a good range of tones from dark to light, but if it's a little bit too light overall or too dark overall, 
that doesn't matter at this point because we're going to fine tune it later. It's Photoshop is really where you decide how do you're going to stretch it and you do that based on how the colors are working out. So for instance if you want more red then you would stretch the sulfur a little bit more. And right now looking at these images in grayscale I don't know what I'm going to want. So I'm just doing a, a good uniform uh, tones across the board stretch. And now I can just select each one of these and I can either use this icon to remove the auto stretch or I can press F12 on the keyboard to remove the auto stretch. So those are our four images. Let me bring back the image container. The last step now is going to be to run Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator to create starless images and an HOO stars image. And I'm going to use this process container that does both Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. And I'll just drag the triangle from the image container like we did before over to that process container and we'll let PixInsight do its thing. And PixInsight is done, so all we have left is to save the images. I'm going to close this image container. This is the HOO image of the stars. I usually run a little uh, process container that I just call Enhanced Stars. It does three things. It does a curves transformation to increase saturation. Then it runs SCNR to reduce red and SCNR to reduce green. And I know that seems an odd way to do it. Uh, but what I have found is uh, tar stars tend to pick up a little bit of green, especially if you have SHO stars. But they also pick up a lot of excess red because they're being extracted from a red background. Uh, so they tend to have too much red. In fact, I usually will have to turn down the red in Photoshop as well. So we've run that. Now we'll just save this image. I'll just go to File, Save As and I just always save them back in my imaging uh, folder for that target and this will be a TIFF and I'll save it as a 16-bit TIFF and I already it's going to overwrite an image for from earlier probably yesterday or the day before and that's fine I don't need the old one I'll say OK and I usually just minimize the images as I go along uh, just so I know that it's already been dealt with or that I can safely ignore it. And then I'll start with the HOO image. File, save as. Again, we're going to save it as a TIFF. Yes, we'll overwrite the old one, 16-bit. And now when I minimize that image, it will just hop over to the next image. File, save as. Now I have to navigate to my correct folder. Select TIFF, save, 16-bit, OK. And I'll just do that with the rest of the images. And that's the last of the images saved as 16-bit TIFFs. So that gives me three monochrome or grayscale images of sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen. One uh, color image of the uh, HOO image, and then the HOO stars. So what we're going to do next in the part two of this uh, video series is we'll open those four files in Photoshop and put those together into an SHO image on an HOO background. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear dark sky. Thanks.